Welcome back, everyone. For those of you who just joined us, this is Seed Story Cup 4, and we are here to bring you the fourth quarterfinal of the day uh, in order to find out who will advance um, to the semi second semifinal to face Gara. I am Ekop, and I am joined here by former opponents, now casting buddies, Radu and Full, of course. How are you guys doing today? I'm doing great. I mean, uh, you, of course, must be a little bit down after losing. Or are, uh, How are you, actually? No, I didn't feel like... There's anything I could do except ban Shaman, which I didn't realize I had to do. So, feels bad, man. You think uh, your inexperience against uh, sh uh, against like Shaman maybe might have affected you in that matchup, or? No, I don't. I don't think it mattered. I just, I didn't, I didn't know that I couldn't beat it with any of my decks. So All right. Yeah. It feels bad, man, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so the quarterfinal that we are going to bring you today is going to be the last quarterfinal for today, and it's going to be Super JJ versus Froden. And um, Froden actually had a very surprising run this tournament. Uh, I Froden think, might I think win the whole thing, man. Exactly. I mean, I think nobody expected him to actually get this far. And now that he's here, people are hoping, a lot of people are hoping that he can go maybe to the final, maybe to win the whole thing. What do you think, Radu? Can he do it? Um, he definitely can, he's already in top 8, but uh, personally I root for JJ because he was my practice partner and uh, we submit the same decks basically and uh, I hope he goes really far and maybe wins it. Alright, so you can definitely give us some valuable insight in his, into his decks then. Uh, after all, he had to bring a fifth deck, so did Froden, uh, because this series is going to be best of seven. And um, yeah, JJ opening up with his Hunter and Froden does the same, so... Froden needs a one drop. Froden's hand is pretty weak. Yeah. And uh, JJ keeping Scientist, he'll put a lot of pressure on the board early on. Yeah, but Froden has uh, that pink-purple hair, so... Yeah, in general, in general, what do you Froden's think? Froden's hand is so bad. But in general, what do you think? Which Hunter is favored? I mean, uh, are, are those two uh, lists the same or the, um, do they differ in any way? I mean, we see two freezing traps for Super JJ and uh, there's Snake Trap for uh, Froden. So, like, Froden seems to be running maybe a little bit more of an aggressive version. Actually, you know, maybe, maybe um, Super JJ only runs two traps, so that scientist isn't going to pull anything, huh? What yeah. Do you think, yeah. 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 Unfortunate. It, like, that's what, you not, that's what you don't want to draw. Yeah. At first I was looking at it like, okay, he has scientists and Froden has nothing he can drop, but uh, he d Super JJ doesn't have anything to follow scientist up. So it's going to be a slower hunter mirror. Weird. Yeah. Froden has got to be liking this. He's nodding his head. He knows two traps are in hand for Super JJ. And he knows exactly what those traps are as well, if he's counted his opponent correctly. The real question is uh, if Super JJ is going to tempo our King Golem on turn 3 and give Froden the extra mana. Well, let's see if he draws anything. Jeez. <laughs> That's pretty bad. Yeah, uh, I, thought, I thought Froden's hand was bad at first. You probably still abuse if you're a power. You cannot afford to tempo our King Golem that yeah, early on. Yeah, you can't. Usually you don't see this. Like, usually they both have the nuts and... Uh, yeah, no. yeah. They fight for early pressure. Like now, nobody had early pressure. They both have like the garbage of the garbage in their hands. You think he'll use horse rider to uh, eat uh, freezing? Hmm? You think he'll use this horse rider to eat freezing? Or will he just knife chug and knife chug and chill? Well, you could just knife chug the snake trap. This seems like a pretty safe play. You want to get something low value back in your hand, like an abusive a hound, a lepernome, yeah, a snake. But if it's not possible, a juggler is juggler, okay. Juggler, juggler, yeah. Yeah, I like this. But then, uh, then I think he will eat it next turn with the horse rider, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, it's always nice to have a charge minion um, being frozen. Sure, Argent horse rider is a little bit expensive uh, later on, but still, it's, it's better than freezing a Leok or a knife juggler. I think Frodon got this yeah. at the moment. I don't really see a way for JJ to make a comeback. Yeah, he would need to have one piece of uh, Knife Juggler Unleash yeah, in, it would, in his it would, hand. It was just too many dead cards. Uh, having the freezing tra both freezing traps, as a matter of fact, in the opening hand is never what you want, but also having Arcane Golem, a card which you usually want to play later in the game, as well as Savannah Hymen, already this early. Super JJ is just in a very tough situation, and he needs some sort of 
back-to-back -back miracle draws right now. For example, unleash the hounds would help. You guys feeling the uh, owl that thing and it knives it twice? I think you have to owl first and see. You see how it lands. If it lands badly, badly you can just uh, send the juggler back and trade with the uh, horse rider's divine shield. Yeah, I I'm like that. Sure I like that. I like that. I like that. First. Yeah, yeah. Like okay, you have well, nothing let's to see lose. He, let's see if he hits the twenty-five percent. Yeah. Boom, boom. Oh. Uh, I don't know about this. Isn't it just okay to just play Snake Trap, actually? Wait, he's gonna give Leah? You definitely don't trade yourself, like your opponent's gonna trade for you. Oh, that, that was a pretty weird turn. Yeah, yeah I, I don't like this. I feel like Snake Trap would've been perfectly fine, but I guess Frodan more wanted to play around the pot potential Unleash the Hounds. Like, with two Knife Juggers on the board, the, the value that Snake Trap will give you is just insane, and Super JJ has to run into his... Um, has to run something into the minions, so Snake Trap would definitely get value, but yeah, of course, Frodo may be worried about Juggler Unleash. Okay, well, I think JJ has a little tiny chance now. Does he? Yeah, I mean, the game slowed down a bit, and he has a high main, but he, he's already at 16. Yeah, he, he, Frodo just lower. plays yeah. Horse Rider, Abusive yeah. Sergeant, and wins. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get the juggle on the stelter. Yeah, okay, seven, no seventy-five percent chance to like hit both. He's down to nine. Yeah, he's dead. Either. Yeah, the high main just a little bit too slow for his matchup, and not Froden's it's hunter not. seems to be the faster one, and therefore usually yeah, the faster hunter is favored, and Froden takes this victory. I mean, they are both slow. It's like JJ was slower drawing double traps. Yeah. yeah, it's it's about the early draws if they drawn a lot of. If they actually drew both the nuts, one, two, three, and they're trading, it's different. Forgotten seems very excited about uh, getting yeah, I like, the I like when he gets hyped up. It's cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Froden has been on fire so far, and he's been feeling it as well. Like, he's been getting more confident and confident uh, the, <laughs> the, the, longer right the longer <laughs> the series has progressed. You, you were like this. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, of course, Rado would look like this. Uh, he doesn't want his teammate to lose, right? Uh, I mean, or his testing teammate? partner. What? Testing partner, that's what I meant. Anyway, uh, so we will have to see what Super JJ is going to bring for game number two. He has um, the choice of either Mage, Warrior, or Druid. What deck would you recommend here? Uh, warrior, right? What kind of Warrior is it? Control. Control Warrior? Yeah. It's pretty good. It's very hard to lose. Yeah, we didn't see like any high mains on Froden's side. Does he run them? He runs them, but he runs Snake Trap too, and uh, Desbite is pretty good against that. Mm -hmm. That is true. Yeah, it's all about uh, whether you get turn five or coin high main or turn six high main. That's the one thing the warrior can't deal is, with too well. Is there any way you keep all the hand? Just take arm with if Cruel Taskmaster, being uh, JJ. You could, yeah. What about Frodan's hand? I'm not sure about keeping the bow. I think you keep Juggler and uh, you hope for more two drops to curve out nicely. Yeah, yeah. you definitely don't want to have uh, something like an Iron Brick all this early. That's, Scientist, that's good. That's what you're looking for. Scientists, Haunted Creeper, Knife Juggler. Like pretty, pretty solid and pretty... Uh, I mean, a, very, a, very, um, a lot of options here for Frodan as well. He can go for different varieties of plays. And he actually has no cruel test target in his hand. He doesn't have a Lepernome he's going to drop or anything, so... Unless he top takes it. If he draws a Lepernome, he probably will play it. Yeah, and then it's, get cruel test, yeah. It's a better curve. Yeah, because then if you draw high man, you can coin it. Because he didn't. So now what do you coin out first here? Knife Juggler. And yep. if he has Fire War, you play Creeper. If he doesn't have Fire War, you push Scientist. Yeah. It's pretty easy. Yeah, you got a YOLO. Is there any merit to just go scientist into scientist instead? Because then you um, you just don't want to run the risk of drawing a trap, maybe. Then you waste the juggler. And like warrior doesn't really yeah. want to kill the scientist either, oh. but he wants to kill the juggler. And he has to kill the juggler. Yeah, the juggler is definitely the minion that deals most de possible damage in the. Also, early con go. contest yeah. yeah. armor sniff perfectly. Exactly. Yeah. Usually, usually it contests armor sniff. And Acolyte, so free attack is very important. I wonder if Juggler will be a 2-2, how many decks would still play him. Uh, next turn might be a little... Next turn, is uh, Ferdinand going to bow the Acolyte if he drops it? And just I go face the rest? I don't think he will drop Acolyte. He probably just uh, trade Cruel Cruel Taskmaster. Taskmaster, yeah. yeah. 
because uh, you have Death by next turn and you expect him to trade a 2 2 scientist into the 1 1 armor smith, then you Death bite what he plays on turn 3, and then the Death bite uh, on turn 5 is going to kill the, armors, uh, the scientist. Yeah. yeah. So, bow will be played, trading off that cruel taskmaster. No, he'll probably just play Acolyte, not Death bite. Yeah, you alkalite for sure. Like, there's no merit to Death by face. Is there? Well, uh. I suppose he wants to set up um, a more efficient turn. Um, like, he uses his mana, his mana more efficiently here and also sets up a draw with He's the gonna Acolyte. He's going to do the draw, exactly. An yeah. additional draw. As well as something that he could play for too, like Hero Power or Harry Warax. Yeah, but now the Death by doesn't trigger after the Death Rattles of Creepers and stuff. Interesting. Well, uh, maybe he wants to kill all the snakes with it if it's snake trap right now. Yeah. That, do we know what's, uh, what trap is it? Does he have a? We did he have a robot? I don't, don't think Frodon looked at it. We didn't know right now. So because he didn't look at it, maybe it's he wants only snakes. Only snake because we saw a snake last game. Wow. That's a hunter deck. <laughs> only snake trap. I think he is freezing though. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. See. Oh, it wasn't snake. He's like one snake, one freezing, I suppose. So now we see both traps on the board. Okay. Interesting. Uh, lucky for Frodo that they came out in that order. Because all the snakes would be dead. Yeah, 50-50. Uh, he would have the bow charged, but yeah, all the snakes would be dead. And now we have... Uh, it's deciding between armor and war axe. He says, go for the armor up. Interesting, like, wh why wouldn't you go for the works here? I really, do you really need the health that badly? I think I would go War Axe because you're playing Shield Mater next turn. Yeah. Like, right now, you don't have time to equip the War Axe to kill if he drops the Juggler, for example. What do you yeah. think, RDU? Yeah, I agree, I agree. Like, um, you just want to make sure you always have a weapon equipped and that you also curve out efficiently. He just needs to drag the game to their late game if he wants to win it. Bash is a pretty good draw. Yeah, it's a good draw. Do you play it, though, over Shield Maiden? Probably. Yeah, but if we, as we see, if he played at Fire War X, um last turn, he could have actually just killed the juggler with the Fire War X and well, have a Shield Maiden on the but board. But then you, you, the, the, you, you do trigger the snakes. Oh, that is true. But you do draw two cards, probably. Oh, yeah, I guess he didn't want, he didn't want to attack at the beginning any, at all. Hmm. He yeah. wants to just wait until he can trigger the trap. So JJ is apparently lo also looking for some sort of AOE, I suppose. So he's stalling for the figure. second death by. Or you, you can, so you can just not attack sometimes for most of the game. You just drop a Belcher and chill. Then they have Al sometimes. You might kill Command Face in this point. Point. Yeah, you need to start emptying your hand for Quick Shot later. Yeah, I don't mind quick kill Commanding Face because you're never gonna kill Command Belcher. It's or never gonna go anywhere else. You have an Al. Maybe the second Belcher. This matchup seems very close right now. Yeah, but the longer oh, it goes, the, the, more, the longer it goes, the more it will favor Super JJ. Unless Froden picks up this uh, his high mains uh, fairly soon. Yeah, of course, Contra Warrior wins late game. Yeah, yeah. If he had, uh, if he just draws a high main this next turn, it's a pretty good spot. If he had drawn it last turn. That was a real thing. He'll probably play Belcher here, armor up, curve out into Shield Maiden, armor up. But that's still really, really slow and passive. Gives Frodon so many turns to just uh, pressure him and maybe get the win. Yeah, but what else can he do, really? Nothing much. All right, what is it? Lothab, that's pretty good. he probably play Lothab, Iron Bikal, go for full face. Yeah. Probably still want to keep the bow. You could even you could low the hero power this turn because you're only getting one more damage that face this turn by. You're actually getting more damage faced by uh, just hero powering than hitting a creeper in the face for one. You know. Yeah. You could always owl next turn. Yeah, that is true. I mean, you do get the owl on the board though. Goes to hero power. 
also, yeah, maybe he doesn't even need to owl the sludge belcher. We'll see. He, got, he could keep owl for something else like Sylvanas or maybe even Sarah if this, the game this, goes that long. This is for sure just shield mid and arm rough and pass, right? I can take the hit. Resident sleep. Back to 32. <laughs> He'll probably keep Alessasa in this matchup to just heal himself. Yeah. I wonder if he'll ever play Zera. He's uh, pretty good versus Hunter, I right? Think, I think this mark is about to begin. Okay. Horse attack is a really efficient card because you don't give your opponent mana and you still push a lot of damage while being uh, very hard to clear. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah, Proton really needs to push a lot of damage the following turns. Because the board for Super JJ is getting stronger and stronger by every passing turn. The thing is that you want to play Gravezooka so that Kushat becomes efficient, but at the same time you want to keep the bow because you want traps yeah. to be efficient. Yeah. So also, what I mean, he's worried about Baral. Uh, with, uh, maybe, I don't know, because he's not playing horse fed right away, right? I hear a lot of people saying Gamba back there. Oh, Elki's here. Oh, he's going to kill him in the menu. So he didn't want that to get a uh, freezing shot back to hand. Even the Belcher getting freezing shot back to hand and replay for seven is a pretty good. But you do give the bow charge. Oh, another shield made it. All right, back yeah. to full, back to full. Yeah, that is actually <laughs> a very huge pickup in combination with the shield slam. You can deal with the low tap right now. Yeah, it's nice. That, so he still is not really forced to attack into the traps. At this point, it looks... I mean, the, the warrior pretty much wins, unless Frodan gets sick draws. I don't even know if he runs high main, but he has to draw high mains. Like high main into high main. Would that even be enough? High main into high main might be enough. Maybe. <laughs> what do you think? What do you think, Ikap? Yeah, high main was definitely what Frodan needs. <laughs> that's, that's been basically the plan from the start. It feels so bad to use your bow because you're going to get two charges from the traps, but you want to empty your hand for quick shot. The thing is that if you look at uh, JJ's game plan, he doesn't want to trigger the traps anytime soon. So Frodan could Should just attack the, the bow, bow yeah, yeah. yeah, and get a quick shot value. Hit with the bow right now, put Glaive Zuka on, drop abusive, quick shot. And then see what you draw and then... But he's not going to do it, he's not going to do it. I don't really like this. Like, JJ is never going to rock the secrets, I think. Oh man, he's... He's really playing around him, proccing it with that. Yeah, he might proc it with that, though. He's a shield maiden, but maybe not. Face is the place. You cannot, you cannot miss the face, right? Uh, yeah. Either way, this feels pretty bad, man, for Frodo. He can still attack with the bow and go for the 75% Glaive Zuka if he regrets playing the abusive. It's true, yeah. <laughs> I think I think he'd be self-conscious about that as a, as a caster. <laughs> not, not to do that. Yeah, so many times if you make like a if you start making a bad play, you just keep it just so people don't don't think you messed up. Yeah. <laughs> but you're like, okay, I really should go for the 75. percent I've been there. Um, well. So when does JJ pull the trigger on this tr on those traps? He doesn't need to, right? Oh, he oh, goes for it right goes. now. Because of Gromash? Probably. Yeah, probably because of Gromash. He knows that he will just win next turn. Oh, he's going Yola. Yeah? Yeah. Teaching this, the hunter how to smork it up. Yeah. I mean, where is over twice the health of the hunter right now? <laughs> I mean, how much There's the high main. He needed that earlier. I mean, how much damage does JJ really expect Froden to have? Uh, one click command has been used already, right? So uh, it's not that much worst poten potential. There's not that much that Froden can do. Yeah. He needs to kill Alex Straza if he wants to survive. Yeah, Mufasa was late to the stampede in the gorge. Uh, you might be too young to have watched Lion King, are you? <laughs> You, wait, wait, you didn't see Lion King growing up? Hmm? You, yeah. didn't, you don't even know what Lion King is? I did. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. good. How old were you then? <laughs> he was probably like... I don't know. Small. Negative. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I remember watching that in the, in the movie back in the day. Like, I was five years old back then. Feels young. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Froden was able to survive thanks to killing the Alexstrasza, but now he has lot of, lost a lot of board. 
a lot of his board in order to do that. But this, with this high main, he might actually still be able to push a lot of damage. And a lot of armor gang cards have been used already for Super JJ, and he has no really easy way to clear this Savannah high main. I saw some funny stuff in chat. Hmm? I saw some funny stuff in chat. Yeah, Twitch chat is really smart. <laughs> Everybody knows that, right? Mm -hmm. Just, uh... He doesn't really have a way. Rodan. He needs to top there, like, another freezing trap. Savannah oh. into Savannah, too late to the party. Yeah, man. Super they JJ not even playing any additional minions here to play around Unleash the Hounds. Maybe if Rodan Quishat it earlier, he could have had one. He would have, uh, if he quick shotted, if he had just equipped the Glaive Zuka uh, several turns before, he would, could have had one high minion. Yeah. Well, this is it. As you can see, there's Grom waiting the BM. for the lethal. And now he can wait no longer. <laughs> so many emotes being thrown out. Because there was a turn, remember, he could have uh, just killed Commander Face. And then the, the next turn, he could have just equipped Glaive Zuka. It was way, way back. And then he could have gotten the quick shot draw. I made one turn earlier, possible. I'm, I don't know if he would have won still, but maybe. J JJ just goes full stance if come out. Oh, yeah, yeah. Let's get. Oh. <laughs> what is that even that he's eating right now? Is that like some. A croissant. A filled croissant? Wait, really? It comes in a package like that? Yeah. yeah. That's how he's Europe. Yeah. You don't like it? No. <laughs> Well, uh, so Super JJ ties up the series, it is now 1-1, one to one, and um, now Froden, on the other hand, has to figure out what to pick against Super JJ. It's Control Warrior. Paladin or Druid? Probably Paladin. Yeah, Paladin definitely has an easy time. No matter if it's um, Secret Paladin or Midrange Paladin, usually the matchup is favored for the Paladin, no matter what. I wouldn't say it's that easy. Like, Brawl is pretty bad for you, and at the same time, Challenger can get bgh or Shield Slammed or Executed. I think War is pretty good. Warrior, Pretty good. The one card, Warrior can't do anything about Tyrion, though. That's true, right? Uh, Sylvanas? Okay, but I mean, that shield, requires setup. Sylvanas Shield Slam does not require setup. That requires setup. You have to have armor against the Secret Pally, and they have to have nothing else on the board. Yeah. That's, that, what is that? Have you ever had it happen? Um, Happens sometimes, yeah. It's I pretty, mean, pretty rare, He man. can have a big board, just need to get more lucky. Okay. <laughs> okay, RDU. Do you even play Hearthstone, Rickful? Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so JJ had the option of actually keeping the Brawl, and you said it's a really important card in this matchup, and, but he chose to mulligan it away. What do you think about that? It's too slow, maybe. He wanted the Fire War Axe, probably. Because if the Paladin starts really aggressive, you need something to stop it. I feel like, especially when you have an additional card and the coin, it's fine to keep those cards that you will eventually need anyway in some situation, uh, instead of just hoping to draw them at some point. So maybe keeping the Brawl would have been a good choice, because you can um, easily have enough draws to fill out your curve properly with a coin as well. Brawl is usually not even that effective versus Secret Paladin. Like, you just kill their dudes and then they make more dudes. Wow. It's better late game when you have like Depth Bite and stuff. Because the chances of curving out Death Bite into Brawl are minimal. Frodon has like a pretty aggressive start as a Super JJ, and it's already turn 5, which is surprising after this short time. Yeah. Yeah. Both players playing very fast. I mean, Super JJ didn't have many options uh, to go with, and Frodon just, yeah, just puts the best possible card on the board. Every turn. Yeah. Execute That's is a pretty good draw. Like and we also see Baron Yadon, which is like one of the most important cards in this matchup. Yep. Yeah, the Baron will definitely clean some house. That's for sure. Uh, so up next, uh, Super JJ with the coins has the option of playing a six drop. Most likely, we'll see Shield Maiden. I would suppose, unless he wants to save the coin for Baron Yadon, even. You could go for something like, uh, like That's some, a good draw. Bash shenanigans. But yeah, now with, with another high impact six drop being picked up, he might just drop down the Sylvanas right now. Yeah, you probably do. It's a good counter to Belcher. The only issue is that 
your opponent can just ignore it, but then you can just stop the, the brawl and punish him. Yeah, easy. <laughs> I like RDU strats. <laughs> yeah, top decking cards is always a good idea. I should try that more often. Redemption on Belcher is pretty sick. Not if you get brawled in Sylvanas. Okay, okay. Okay, he's uh, going for the coin baron again. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna do something. This job. just draw is important because if he doesn't draw Doctor Six, he's gonna play right into this Baron Gen probably a knife juggler. You see? Uh, maybe not. We'll see. Maybe he's scared of brawl too. Yeah. Maybe he's. Usually people aren't thinking coin baron getting. I'm fairly sure we're gonna see at least a creeper, like creeper, and maybe like a hero power. Okay, so he's not dropping knife juggler because he's already hero powered. You don't play redemption because you get a dude. Do you play zombie chow? Probably not. I don't know. I wouldn't mind playing the Creeper here. It makes your board more resilient to a Brawl or to a Baron Geddon. Yeah, why not Creeper? Hmm. I wonder. He probably just wants to get rid of the Zombie Chow now and then keep the Creeper for later. Now so Baron Geddon hits the board, clearing okay. everything but that Zombie Chow. Oh, man. How did the Secret Pally not draw Dr. Six into Dr. Seven, into Dr. Eight? Rigged. Sometimes unlucky, I guess. I've never seen this. In this tournament, it's every time, right? <laughs> yeah, and especially for Froden, who has been performing very well with the Paladin in the group phases. Uh, yeah, must, must be tough to have a pretty poor draw like this. The thing about this deck is that uh, you run so many early game cards that you can even afford to keep challenging your starting hand, which maximizes the chances of having it by turn six. Yeah. So... Frodan is pretty unlucky. The big thing, the <laughs> crazier thing is that Challenger isn't legendary. <laughs> so you could have two. <laughs> so you could really have it on turn six almost every time. Yeah, like you have boom almost every you time fall. on turn seven. Yeah. Imagine the power of the Challenger. Yeah. I still loved it when uh, people were saying that uh, Secret Party is like a niche deck, like uh, pretty weak. Yeah, that was really weird. Yeah, I mean, but, uh, it's it's kind of always like that when a new deck emerges. It was the same thing with Patron Warrior, to be honest. They're like, yeah, Nobody you know, it to be like if the you most don't, if you don't deck draw uh, Warsong Commander, Patron Warrior's bad. Well, the whole deck's draw, man. Like, <laughs> the hell. But yeah, that's definitely the Secret Paladin has proven himself and is like the probably even the, stro the, the strongest contender in the current meta game overall. At least the most popular deck on ladder, I would say. Uh, Frodan's starting to feel bad right now. I can tell, you can see that he's like, oh man, I didn't draw Dr. Six. Life's getting harder. My knife driver is about to die. To Baron Geddon. But he feels the Tyrion as the next card. He feels it, yeah, here we go. This is so important. He's channeling his top decking powers. Challenge. Or, or the challenge. Bam. Oh. oh, that's not Tyrion. That's awful. So compare that card he just drew to like Tyrion, Dr. Boom, Mysterious Challenger. Challenger. It's just slightly worse if you're watching the stream, you're new to Hearthstone. Yeah, but this is the nature of the deck. I mean, if you, if you don't draw the curve properly, this will happen. I mean, because you have those secrets in your deck. Hey, you don't trade them in your right now? Yeah, yeah, you probably do. Doesn't matter. Wait, could have knifed it one more time and then... Yeah, he should have traded before playing the... Maybe he wanted to face that Yeah, I was... Maybe. I don't think you mind it. Like, Warrior is going to Alex Traza you anyways, right? Yeah, yeah. It's true. Most of the time. Probably not now. Um, so, let's see. Do you play Chill Maiden or do you play Jesticar? Oh, he, he, what, did, what is he dragging right now? Oh, that's fine, okay. Oh, actually, this Bite into Fire Warrior is pretty good. Click the board. You could, like, instantly re -keep. Yeah, the one problem is the Avenge. Just trade the Belcher afterwards, but he wants to get rid of the Noble Sack. And now he hopes the Avenge goes on the Creeper. Never lucky. Okay, so Creeper is the only thing that stays on the board after he puts Fireworks on. And... and did, did, oh, he didn't do it. Wait, what? Yeah, he didn't go for it. He chose to let the board lift for another turn, but this might actually backfire now. I really don't like this play from JJ. Yeah, uh, well, now, with the uh, it's three knives. It, it, this, I mean, he didn't have an activator for execute for this boom, and now maybe he'll get execute. 
he needs to hit seven. This is, this is effectively four, uh, eight additional damage that has uh, been put on the board. Super JJ, if he played the fireworks, would have been effectively on 15 health right now. Yeah, but Boom would hit on the empty board. So, he's still... Oh, uh, okay. It would have been pretty good for would Super Would have been JJ. pretty good. I mean, he's still not super bad, unless you die. Dying's not that fun. You can just play Sylvanas and kill the Creeper. Hope you, that the Boom boss kills Sylvanas, you steal the Boom. Or you could Shield Maiden and kill the Creeper. Then it's a little safer. Is it safer? Like if you see I mean, it's a little safer. If you, you, you can't die. <laughs> you can actually die the other way. Yeah, I guess. You don't want to die. Dying is not fun. And next time you just go Justicar, right? Alright, so let's see if he would have died. <laughs> just for fun. I mean, if he's a 7 HP or 8 HP, the Boombas are obviously going to kill him, but now the Boombas don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> They have feelings, man. Oh! Oh my goodness. That so that's is exactly good the draw that Broden needed. No, but remember what Artie said. You could always have Sylvanas Shield Slam when they drop Tyrion. Yeah, Sylvanas. Yeah. Not right now, unfortunately. So, um... Uh, Alex Shaza puts you at 15. Armor up, Jessica. Armor up puts you at 13. You so. could do the Justicar Card play and trade uh, BGH. You could play Boom and Armor Up, which is pretty risky. You could play Sylvanas Armor Up, which is even more risky. Yeah, the, Sylvanas is so YOLO. I, I don't like Alex Traza, so he's probably just a car. Maybe you have to Boom mm. to win the game. Nah. Do you? You, you die to so many things. I just feel like that... Although I guess on the back of Alex Traza, you don't really care about that uh, Ashbringer that drops out of the tier in too much. Because you will be able to heal yourself back up. He's going with the boom. Balls. Okay, chat spam balls. <laughs> For once, it's not no balls. Oh. Oh, he, he didn't draw Blessing of King's top deck to kill. What the hell? Yeah. Rigged. He has so many outs. Like, even Consecration was an out if he runs that. Uh, True Silver, probably Coghammer, right? Yeah. Probably uh, Kings, it. too. Yeah. Way too many things. Okay, what happens now? Well, now, now Super JJ will be able to clear this most Alex, of the... This Alex is nice. He, can, he could have top deck like Shield Block into Shield Slam. Mm. That would be something. Yeah, the Alex Strata is going to be very, very good here. He will play Alex Strata for sure because he didn't play Armor Smith. So... Yeah. I wouldn't have mind playing Armor Smith and then just take our hero power. That's also pretty good, yeah. I, I'm surprised he didn't think about it a little bit. But he has a 2 health and he has an Alex Strata, so... Yeah, yeah. He like just wants to do it. Pretty obvious play. Well, what's under the shredder? I want to know. You can uh, did you guys hear face. about the Oskaka uh, orange game with the two shredders? I mean, I watched it. Yeah. You, didn't you? Yeah. No, I didn't see it live, but I was talking to Oskaka. It's like one. He said it was like one, one out of twenty k. Yeah, something like that. Esports, man. Yeah, we've had some pretty ridiculous shredder outcomes today as well. Oh man, he didn't check. Oh balls. I mean, it, there's no reason to trade with the Shredder, is there? You just want to apply Pleasure and force uh, Lethal next turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Frodank draw Coghammer, so... Yeah, the, the negative downside, unfortunately, to that Coghammer is that he has to replace that awesome weapon that is Ashbringer. But it is necessary in order to survive. Although, technically, he, did, he wasn't quite dead yet. There was only 15 damage on the board and he said 16. But he was expecting Super JJ to have something else as yeah, well. Yeah, Cruel Task, Fire War Axe. Rom. That's a bit of lethal. One off, right? You could like crawl as master the shredder and then armor up, tank it to the fire war axe, mm. and then go for phase for 15. But uh, now you probably just armor me Justicar, double trade. You get uh, six armor. Yeah, you got a 11. And he has four plus the shredder. So shredder average is two, six. You're safe. Mm, if if he has a three attack shredder and he top decks kings, you die. Or true. Oh no, true silver is not good. Yeah, but on, on average you're safe. On average you're safe. Yeah. He hasn't used. Oh, he used one kings. So there's only one kings left. Still has true silver, right? Okay, so this oh, but, is, but this is impor important RNG here, guys. What comes out of the shredder, and then it, it needs to be three attack, kinda. 
Oh, that's not good. That's not free attack. Because now he can't top deck Kings and win. Yeah, yeah. And Kings was the only top deck because True Silver would replace the yeah, actual yeah, weapon. Yeah, True Silver is not good. Oh! If the Shredder was a three, like a Blood Fen Raptor, he wins the game right there. It would have been like 35%. So, never lucky. Mm. This is a really important matchup, too, right? Wow. That was. Those Shredders, man. The thing about LHS is that because you can contact, you always want to win the matchups that you go into. The nice thing about playing Hearthstone is you never feel like you lost just because of a random effect, you know? <laughs> Compared to playing other games like Counter Strike or StarCraft. Nice meme. So yeah, Froden trying to figure out a way to survive here, but survival is not the key here. <laughs> survival only buys him some time. Leaving yeah. Darmazif on the board is like insta-loss. Also the tank up, not armor up, is gonna end the game and seal the deal. So yeah, Super JJ, despite, the, uh, despite our expectations, takes it against the Paladin. Which, so he takes this unfavored matchup and actually pulls ahead now in this series. Two victories, two one. So um, now, now oh, what? What yeah. now? What do you in Froden spot? I mean, the, the clear counter with a secret power didn't end up working out uh, due to poor draws. And um, what Man. do you what do you take now? I actually think that he should have went Warlock because uh, if it's Handlock, it's super favor versus Warrior, like seventy something percent. If it's Zoo, it's probably the same. Zoo is like super good against counter Warrior. You just float the board and uh, push a lot of damage. Yeah, but secret power was fine. He didn't even draw Doctor Six. And he was a shredder being bigger off winning. You know, shredder. It's rocking. very hard to evaluate which is better versus the warrior. Secret yeah. body, you know, Zoo, but they're both very close. All three of Frozen, Frozen's remaining decks were really good against warrior. Yeah. So he goes for the warlock now. Let's see if it's Zoo or Hanlock. Oh, Sea Giant Zoo. That's interesting. Okay. It's, um, I don't think JJ has a double BGH like Stan, right? Just one BGH. Wow, that's a really good hand from Frondan. Yeah. He always won the flaming Voidwalker into two drop. Now he just is an in in gang boss and he has a perfect curve. We haven't seen, I want to touch on the fact that we haven't actually seen many uh, Zoo decks in this format, uh, in this tournament so far. What do you think about uh, Zoo in general and last year's standing? Is it a good deck to bring? It's weaker than in Conquest. So, I mean, you would look at like the matchup that it, uh, you can bring it against, so you can counter those particular matchups. So, I think that with uh, the popularity of Druid and uh, Control Warrior, it's actually a pretty fine deck to bring. But is the thing it, is isn't it just like a weaker secret pally? Yeah, yeah, you, you always have better options. Like, if you want to contact Druid, you have better options. If you want to contact Control Warrior, you have better options. But, I mean, if you want to have two secret, uh, secret pally and a slightly weaker secret pally, then yeah. Then yeah. you can take Hunter. That's true, yeah. <laughs> Although, oh. is Hunter actually... The Hunter is not really strong against Control Warrior that and fiery war Druid. So and his, his starting hand was uh, Death Spites, Belcher, Shield Maiden, but he got two Fiery War Axe, which is really important, because he's able to kill that Flame Imp. If he can't kill that right away, he's taking too much damage. Frodan also managed to curve out nicely, but the Death Spite is going to be really good. Now here, the best play would actually be taunting the 1-1. One -one. Just the 1-1, one -one so you don't... Yes. Do, little Creeper guys don't die. Do it, Frodan. He knows, he knows. Just our deal. No, 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 no. Not oh. like this. He wants that one damage. Well, it's probably not worth it, right? No. You want to, the creeper to be sticky and annoying. Yeah, I like sticky. Don't you like annoying? I like annoying too. Nice. Well, the owl is actually pretty great here to bypass that taunter. And the void of like is pretty bad. Can't even force a life tap here. He's getting him pretty low. Owl abusive face, face, face. But you know what? He has another Belcher and two Shield Maidens. Hmm. And he has Brawl. And it's going to be pretty close, though. This board is probably not Brawlable. It's not Brawlable. It's, it's a Shield Maiden or a Belcher turn. Probably Shield Maiden. Yeah, just kind of curve, yeah. Uh, he, can, he, he might be a little scared, but... Uh, you do... What, what do you die to? Uh, you die to P.O. Uh, Doomguard, right? You don't play around that. <laughs> Let's get real. Uh, I mean, he's thinking about it for sure. You exactly die to it. 6 plus 9, 15. Yeah, but if you brawl, you also die to it, and you have a shitty board. No, but I'm thinking about uh, Belcher. 
Belcher is oh. good too. Yeah, but Belcher, don't you steal lightweight? No. So Dungar trades and then two on trades. Well, no, te no, Belcher, Belcher is seven health, so you have seventeen. Yeah, technically okay. Belcher provides more health, um, like at least seven. And, and it has enough and attack. He, only he did Belcher. Five. He did Belcher. He was scared. I'm fine with that. Oh, oh, that's a draw. Okay, so you you trade one of the. You pawns. trade one so you can get a four. You trade, it doesn't matter what. If you're a hunter, you trade abusive to keep the beast, but yeah, yeah. you're not hunter. Okay, so it's knife city time. Let's go. Go. Do it. Do it. You have to wait. Be calm. Oh, oh, this is how you get the four. Yeah. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. You either do it like instantly at the start of the turn or just wait until the rope. Okay, now we want to knife that other. Actually, we're fine with phase too. Not bad. Oh, three times on the other Belcher. Face is okay too. Yeah, no, face is good too. You just efficiently trade now. You probably trade to protect the um, juggler. Oh man, if you trade and then he brawls and you have Dr. Boom follow up. Pretty good. Oh, he needs... Uh, hmm. If he drop, top takes Death Spite, he could do the Death Spite and then put on the War Axe. That's what Close he needs. Close to the face. Okay, so it has to be Brawl. Yeah, he probably doesn't expect his board to live here, so he might as well go face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Instead of trading. And cool task is good. Then JJ is only out his BJ right next turn. Mm, shield block. Yeah, shield slam. Might shield block into shield, shield slam. 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 Shield made an armor up shield slam. Oh, actually, there's not enough mana for that. Yeah, okay, yeah. never mind. So shield maiden, armor up. That's okay. Oh, oh the boom bot. It's more Eleven. bomb. Okay, his eight damage. He's free. Yeah, he's just power bombing, doom guard, whatever. Or yeah, boom bot to face. You tap first, right? You tap first. Tap first for sure. Uh, tap first. No balls. No balls. <laughs> what Yo. do you think? <laughs> what do you think of putting eight to the face and then implosion in your boom bot? Actually, that's bad. I mean, you get one more damage, but you lose no, but one you more target. Yeah, yeah. If so you, you just hit the cruel task, you get the 50-50. Now you need... Why don't you, why four to face. One out of eight. Never lucky. <laughs> you can still tap for Lita. Like, what, what is, why is this he scared of? I don't know. No, tap! Now he goes with this line to, like, uh, not look like he misplayed, right? Yeah, I don't like no tap. He probably fakes some organics. I don't mind this. This puts a really strong board on, the, on yeah, for Frodoin, but light tapping there was definitely not bad either. You have to Acolyte, Crawl Toss Monster to Acolyte, get BGH, and then barely survive. Hey, you still die. Ah, oh, you right? still die, never mind. No, no one after armor up. See, the, the thing is, he could have had. Maybe he probably knows he doesn't have two brawls in his deck. Frodank. Damn. Well, Frodoin ties it up again. I guess the nice thing about Zoo. Compared to, uh, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Time for Never the mage, boys. Lucky. Time for the mage. The nice thing about the zoo compared to the secret pally is it's more consistent. With, you know, you don't have to draw, draw six, seven, eight. But usually you draw six. Doctor Six, I think. Here we go. This is the deck. What's that? Dark Bedler. New card. New Na card. Wait, Punk champ. Nax is out. Nax out. Confirmed. Dark Peddler. Actually, a card that's. Um, yeah, obviously, uh, it seems like an obvious fit into Zoo. Um, you would get, uh, as far as I know, you get a really She's high screaming. chance of actually getting one drops uh, from the Warlock as well. And Warlock has plenty of good one drops, like Power of Whelming, like Flame Imp, Void Walker, and uh, Soul Fire, for example. Mortal Coil, even. Do you guys on the stream hear uh, Eloise screaming in the background? <laughs> Just wondering. Bedlock is a really interesting card. Oh, Soul Fire. Yeah, there it is. Just get a soul fire. Be a man. No balls. Well, the soul fire is actually a good pickup. I mean, um, the the doom. Usually, you don't want to have two cards that discard cards in your hand. But uh, with the void caller, he will get the doom guard into play, and then soul fire is the only remaining discard card. So, pretty good for Froden. Ah, see, John will probably still be there. The good thing about the, the Peddler is that it can play it on turn 2 and then get the one drop for later, or it can play it on turn 3 and just have a play. It's a pretty interesting card, but having so many 2-drops in Zoo already, I'm not sure if he can fit it. I mean, Frodan did already, but... 
Oh, that's interesting. Would you just play the draft jungler there? Uh, I don't know, I like tapping. But it's too slow versus freeze mage, you give them time to expand and do some nasty stuff. The thing that I don't like personally about live tapping there is that you increase the chance of drawing into a demon and then uh, Void Caller might not get the guaranteed Doom Guard into play. Well, now he has a Nargis. No, I know what you mean, Ika. Yeah, I still think you actually... Although, had you gotten uh, some of your demons to just play, like Void uh, Voidwalker and um, Flame it, you would have played it that turn on turn three, right? The small ones. Yeah. Just like that one. But just not uh, Imp Gang Boss. So it's fine. That's a good card later. Okay. You... He probably doesn't want to proc it because... He, if JJ has one more bag in his hand, he'll play it. And you don't know what is the interesting thing about the order, the way they ordered the lineup? It will probably end in a Druid Mirror. Like, statistically, JJ should win this and then Frodan should win the next one. Yep, yep. It's and then quite often in LHS, right? The Druid Mirror to, the, yeah. to end it. But don't come Yeah, I think all, all, all my series before uh, Shaman. But uh, appeared. We're Druid Mirror to end it. I wouldn't count out Frodon just yet, though. I mean, he has a lot of good cards that are really important in this matchup. Uh, he has Low Tap, he has Doctor Boom, and, this, uh, and also Maganis is impactful. There, he, he will eat a Fireball uh, so that will not go to the face. And also, uh, Freeze Mage has a very tough time dealing with the Sea Giant, potentially. So, let's see. Yeah, if Frodon manages to win this game, then JJ is super unfavored to win the series because Druid has a very bad matchup against the Zoo. All right, so I think he's, it looks like he's going for the Lothab. Uh, JJ actually has a good turn after Lothab because he has Emperor, something to do. You usually want to Lothab on their turn seven. Turn seven, because they can't Nova. But he's good on curve with the boom, so yeah, just play it probably. Yeah. See, Giant is not bad in this matchup if you get the board big. Unfortunately, this Lothab doesn't actually affect him here because he would have played Emperor anyway. Oh, maybe he would have played that. No. Yeah. Nope, nope, yeah. Okay, oh man. Frodan is probably at, some, at a point where he doesn't want to tap more. Um, Do you just trade a Void Caller? I think he's considering Sea Giant this turn. Because it might be hard to play it later. Yeah, I feel like maybe... Okay, he's not. You have to trade the Emperor, right? You cannot let the Emperor yeah, survive. Yeah, but uh, I think I feel like the leaving the Void Caller alive is good because it makes your board um, more resilient. resilient. We use the same word. But now the um, Void Caller has the risk of actually getting a Void Walker into play if um, Super JD decides to kill it, that is. Wow, that bombs. So People in the back said missed six damage because the boom bots didn't. No work. silence, no silence against the doomsayer, unfortunately. But uh, we will have uh, after the after the doomsayer procs, we will still have a board of either doomguard and Mar or Marganis and two spiderlings. Oh yeah, if chat's wondering why he played Void Walker, it's so he doesn't get that out from the thing. Uh, void collar. So many void voidy things. Frostbolt is a pretty good draw. He only needs a fireball now to win the game, right? Yeah. Yeah. 11 damage already. He can just win in three turns by ping, ping, ping. Yeah, he has so much time. But too. Then, then again, the Morgana is still has a Nova. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you don't play around Morganis. You just do of it. Of course not. Yeah, well, even if it's still Broden a good has to be worried about his life right now at this moment. After Extrada has hit the board, going aggressive for the damage. Six. And. Uh, yeah, he had to go for the Magaius in order to save himself, basically. This looks like an AI Cone of Cold turn. You Cone of Cold, Ice Lens, Ping, and also like draw. You draw first, yeah. Yeah. Pretty nice curve. Here we go. Do you Ping oh. or do you play the Scientist? You definitely Cone of Cold. I think and you just Cone of Cold Scientist. But you have to Ice Lens too, right? You could. Cons you want to get him when he's frozen. Yeah, damage. but you will have you have Nova. You can always oh, I don't know. Okay. You can consider doing it later. I guess. 
Yeah, he wants to uh, set up a maybe potentially good flame strike turn. So uh, running the scientist into the Malganis and then flame striking the Malganis and whatever Proden will play next. Yeah. What do you guys think about Forgotten Torch in Freeze Mage? I think it's pretty good. I think it's actually a viable fireball replacement. Yeah, the one bad thing is you're trying to uh, get to certain cards, like Alexstrasza and whatever, and it's going back in your deck and you're drawing it instead of those cards sometimes. So it makes it a little harder to evaluate. Do you all that? You already saw Doomsayer, so probably yeah. Yeah, I think so. You just all in Argus? You have to you have to go all in. Owl in. Owl, owl in, in. Owl in. <laughs> 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 well. The memes. <laughs> oh. This is the, the Oh, and the flame strike will be so devastating. That was a here. really important knife cuz yeah, it makes the Malganus die. That scientist. I mean, it was a 25%. You yeah, yeah. Should expect something nice to happen. Yeah. JJ wants to torch it up. He's going to torch his own face because he knows he won. The game is so over. Nothing can stop me. Nothing can stop me. Oh my god. Miracle Lord Jaraxxus. Oh. Okay, but don't don't worry, guys. Is there anyone on that card that can save you? No. Absolutely not. Elven Archer yourself. Or no balls. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. There we go. The plays. Okay, so now... Uh, Frodon just Druids into Freeze Mage and you usually win that. And like 80%. It's hard to lose. But... 80% is fair. Yeah. They, they pretty much have to get a Doomsayer Nova and you don't have Keeper. And then they have some kind of good follow-up. Like they drop Ember. I'm so at this point it's like 60-40 for JJ if the Mingor is 50-50 and the uh, Druid versus Freeze is 80-20. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still good odds for Frodon. Yeah, Frodank can still make it. You don't want too much ramp. You don't want Dynasus, probably. Mm. There's a chance you just draw combo now. Okay, never mind. This sign is perfect. You just innervate the shader on turn one to apply pressure, right? Most likely. Yeah, the only way for Super JJ to actually deal with it immediately is a Frostbolt. But oh, oh new Michael card? Jackson makes his appearance. New card! And also a novice engineer. Is that a new card too? He probably plays it um, to just uh, make Reno more effective. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, maybe they're playing like one loot hoarder, one novice engineer, I suppose. Oh maybe. my god. The power of the Jackson. I love Nax. <laughs> Thanks, please. All right, so Frodank's thinking about how, he, how he's going to do this. He's not an easy turn. Okay, he's going with that. And then uh, if it doesn't get frost bolted, he, he goes can. for Azure Drake to Shredder. That's pretty good. Yep. That's a nice draw. Convenient. The thing is that if you play Azure Drake now, yeah, and your and Dynastus, Dynastus dies, dies, you can't Shredder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was the risk of not going for turn one Shredder. But if you go for turn one Shredder, then if you don't, if you don't get another four drop, yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. What would you have done? I feel like you would do turn one Shredder though. It's hard, like when you see both hands as a cast deck, it's easier to say when you're in the zone and playing yourself, you think of so many things that it's like hard to say what you have done. Yeah. Unless you're there. I feel like the other Drake plays perfectly fine. He, uh, probably I don't think would be unhappy about playing this 10 for BGH right now. Just having a three drop. Oh, actually with Shade, it's even better now. Yeah. Yeah, the BGH was fine. But too. the BGH would have been a fine play because you, your only target is Alex Straza and. And they should win the game by then. Yeah, exactly. And they usually use it defensively to not die to so, the pressure. Uh, it is important. It is important to say that Frodo already has keeper for a Doomsayer Nova. It's probably the most important thing in the matchup. He needs a Shredder next turn, so I things are looking good. Like Unless somehow this new card <laughs> changes things later on. It's gonna be an interesting matchup. Yeah, the Vino Jackson allows you to just. Get your ice block popped, heal yourself back up to full, and then maybe you even have the Alex Raza in order to deal oh damage. Oh my god, shredder position. No, it's good for Kona Cold, I'm trolling. Yeah, the one time where you don't want shredder in the middle. <laughs> also, when you're a shaman, you have flame tongue in your hand. You don't want it in the middle, because then it doesn't slide.
Seeing both hands, Frodan is like heavily favored to win this game. Yeah. Applies way too much pressure for JJ to handle. That Emperor is a good pickup for JJ though. Oh, he'll just play the Doomsayer. Yeah, Doomsayer to gain health. Yeah, he's like the target is back here. Yeah. Will we see a silence regardless? Now he can use the, the Keeper as 7 damage. Better than Fireball. Actually 8 damage. Yeah, sounds like a pretty good battle cry to me. Uh, he decides to save it for a second to potential Doomsayer. <laughs> you hear the background. <laughs> Delay. So he's playing that so he can play Lore next turn. He wants to play that Darnassus. You don't so really want to play Lore, do you? You want to keep it to heal. It's like one of the ways where you can It lose. depends. I mean, if your hand's dead, if you don't have any minions to drop every turn, you want to play it for draw, right? Don't you play into something? No, you don't. No, he's not attacking with the shade. What's he worried about on turn I six? I don't see why not You have to, to attack. attack. Yeah, 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 yeah. You want to stealth it now yeah. at four attack. There we go. The flame strike is not a threat just yet. So, uh, oh. Nova Barrier, okay. It's very defensive, but set up into a nice flame strike. Yeah, it doesn't kill the shade, though. I would have liked to see the ping on the shade, maybe more than the ice barrier. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So you can efficiently clear with flame strike, but then it's like too obvious that you flame strike. Yeah, but sometimes it's not really important that it's too obvious. You yeah, have like, to just do it. Yeah, what can you do on turn seven? Yeah, like I mean, they're expecting it anyway. <laughs> so, so will we actually see Ancient of Lore drawing cards here? You uh, you said yourself, Radu, that um, you want to keep the Ancient of Lore usually in order to heal yourself because you have all the burst with the other minions already, so you don't really need the, the two to get the cards. It does, it does draw you into your other lore, though. You know, I think that here it's okay because of the body and because you want to keep rid of the claw to charge it next enough that the flame stack was used. Yeah. yeah. To efficiently maximize the damage. Yeah. This is good. After the flame strike, there's still three minions on the board. He just flame strike and he gets a doomsayer. But you know, he uh, he could have put the lore to the right side of the shredder. What if? There's a flame tongue under there. Ooh. Let's see. Okay. Now the shade would have been dead. Yeah, it's a big difference. Fredan said he's not like extraordinary, but JJ's hand is even worse. He needs a blizzard to be able to do something. So much damage coming in. Oh my goodness. A blizzard would be really good. JJ is in a really bad spot. Like, as a freeze mage, you want to have the ice block up and then stall, 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 play Alex Trust and win the game. But when you don't have the ice block up and your opponent's pressure is you, you cannot do two things at the same time. You cannot, like, uh, stall and. Uh, he's already burst. at 14, so he's feeling pretty bad. Because that's where you died to combo later. Ugh. He probably just like uh, he's gonna he's yeah. gonna frostbolt and fireball. I like but this. It's hard, yeah, but it is hard to win from here. Maybe with the new card. Yeah. Pog champ. Mr. Jackson. Yeah, currently, there's still no way for um, Froden to pop mm -hmm. the block. Wow, well, Froden has a really bad hand here. But I mean, he, he has a BGH ready for the Alexstrasza, but everything else doesn't do anything. He might wrath his own minion, but it makes it die to ping, so it's a little awkward. He might use one keeper face. Just to have a minion on the board. But there's there actually no ice block down there, is there? No. Oh, never mind. Okay. JJ wants the ice block fast, and he also wants ice lens. And uh, I think there's like one more card that he has to off in the deck right now. Now would be like a really sick time for Reno Jackson. Maybe if he top decks. Doesn't he have probably two blizzards? Maybe, maybe not with that card in this deck, huh? Blizzard's such a good card, though. Yeah, but when you play a deck with Reno Jackson, you probably build the deck around it. Oh, that's the Ice Lens. So now he only needs the Ice Block in his hand. Yeah, but isn't he just dead right now? Uh, he can Alex himself. Still survive. Emperor. Okay. Goes for the really line of play. 
and loses the game. Yeah. But I don't mind it. Like, I probably lose anyway. You, you have to be greedy. He had BGH for that, Alex, too. So. Okay, so now, like we said, it's going to the Druid Mirror in yep. the end. Statistically accurate. Feels. That's what happens when both players have like uh, really good lineups and really similar lineups. It all depends on the first game and it usually ends or starts with the Druid Mirror. Frodan seems pretty excited. He likes uh, the chances of him drawing wild growth. I mean, this has definitely been exciting. Oh, straight into so it. Far. Nice. Okay. Wild growth. Yeah, wild growth. Easy. Fro dank. Both players, three victories apiece. Okay, so and now it all comes down to this Druid Mirror. Whoever loses it is out of the tournament. The winner advances to the semifinals to face Gara. So we will have to see who advances here. JJ did a really weird mill again, in my opinion. He kept rough in the shade. That's a bit shady. Ha. 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 I see what you did there. Okay, so <laughs> you can coin wild growth and then shade. You don't have a follow-up after shade, but it's still fine. You have a swipe, I guess. That turn. Okay. Oh, he has Aspirin into Shredder. That's good stuff. They both have pretty good hands. Uh, anyway. The Druid mirror match is actually skillful when both players either have really good hands or really awful hands. Our Druid mirror went forever. Yeah, because we all we both had uh, awful hands, right? Yeah, we both had awful hands. That was one of the longest ones I played. We had like six cards left, right? You just had, you just had pretty awful top decks. Six cards and two force of natures. Here's yeah. bad, man. Yeah. It was a very exciting series, though, to say the least. I mean, I really enjoyed watching and casting it. I'm happy that I put you in the spot to enjoy watching it. I'm sad that I, I just went on to uh, not ban Shaman and lose to two Kazan Mystics, but it's cool. Wah, 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 wah. Baby Rage. <laughs> so Druid of the Claw from Frodan, followed up by probably Druid of the Claw from JJ. I don't think you want to Azure Drake into a 4-6. Yep. Uh, Will we actually see a Keeper of the Grove being able to kill off that Druid of the Claw? Yeah, sometimes we'll see the Keeper. I think you keep There's her. argument for the Forest too, because you keep your Druid uh, of the Claw healthy and he can't deal with it for a while, maybe. Depends what he has. I like the Wild Grove too, because you curve out into combo, you just go lower and then top deck the Savage Yeah, 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 yeah I like and it. Combo him down. Yep, Keeper's good. Yeah. The additional mana crystal might come in handy as well, in general, no matter what you draw into. Because uh, your hand will be, uh, will be clunky with the Force of Nature and the second Age of Lore in your hand. Depending on what you draw, you might want to get the mana crystal immediately. Mm. I like Sylvanas here, forces the board to trade. Yeah, double trade into that and Lore. He considers trade. Okay. So yeah, he's going to double trade in Lore right away. There's no other option. Yeah, so that was a pretty good 5-5 taunt minion right there. Actually, you know what? There was an option. I mean, you can force some nature. You hope he steals one of the trees. <laughs> Big plays. Yeah, protecting a 4-2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, the value. <laughs> and then you don't draw two cards that turn and lose your force nature. The 4-2 Druid of the Claw can be a huffer, right? It's a beast. Yeah. It's pretty close to that. Yeah, it's a taunt huffer. <laughs> OP. Weird. JJ drew the combo, but he still has two more turns until it. Does he want to keep the shade I mean, stealthed? You can just go ham and play the Druid of the Claw to charge, maybe rough the lore for one. So if he waits with the shade stealth the whole time, it'll have seven attack on the turn of combo, it'll have for nine with uh, Savage Roar plus another 14, 20, 23. So if he pushes four now, plus one, five. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a, there might be a couple armor ups by then, though. Um. Usually Druid wants to play on curve. They don't want to use hero power this early in the game. But on turn 9... But Frodan will think something is fishy, so he might... Uh, it might be fishy, yeah. He probably just Druid <laughs> of the Claw <laughs> hero power. Yeah, Druid of the Claw hero power um, actually sets up a potential lethal for... Uh, with, with the Shade alone and the Force of Nature Savitor combo. Doesn't even have to... Unstealth the Shade. 
It goes so. for the rough cycle. Oh, low tap is pretty nice. Oh, taunt. Oh, did that oh actually, I like the taunt. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was only thinking of putting damage to the face, but you can just unstill the shade and uh, do consistent damage. I really like this play from JJ. Yeah, uh, you know, this actually forces force of nature. Forces force, doesn't it? Force and hero power or savage roar, one of the two. No, you, you just... Mm, you could force shade also. You just full trade. Yeah, that's the play, like, if you play uh, the force. The only problem is that your board is going to be very weak and your opponent can just replay some minions and then uh, kill you and with then combo. combo you the next turn. But he doesn't really have oh. options, man. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Town Druid of the Claw is doing some nice work. Uh, also, keeping the shit in the starting hand was pretty good for JJ. Oh man, Froden might be on the turn. Throw Dank. Oh, well, this is a pretty good clear for Froden. Yeah. And he can still draw a second course of nature later on in the game. He still has this Ancient of Lore to draw into it. Yeah, but this this uh so Lothab's gonna hit face the following turn and it's scary. Do you play Lothab though? You probably yeah. don't. You're on a Drake so that you can set up Lothab before you finish him with combo. Oh, yeah. Now I just go Lothab keep True, 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 true. But if oh. he would have drawn shade, he would have played oh, that's interesting. Huh. You think he'll go Lothab Shredder? Mm. Is it that good? It's probably not. You wanna trade a shade into Dananasus probably to get an efficient trade out. Um, could also Savage Roar, probably not. Ooh, oh, wow. I think he had to lift up Shredder. You guys didn't think so? I don't mind this play because if Super JJ sets up a little, then Frodan can just contact Lotev and set up little himself and then force the trades. Okay, it's we'll see. Pretty interesting doing oh, Yeah, but Frodan is forced to trade this uh, now and a uh, potential swipe. Is swipe 5 so 2 2 yeah. plus hero power clears board. Play Shade, right? Actually, no, you keep her the free one. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And does it break? Uh, face. face. This tells something to Frodan. Yeah. I mean, when you're in a Druid Mirror, you're always thinking of combo. So he's going to Lothar right back. And Shredder. That's a pretty powerful turn. Uh, now he calculates if he dies with Savage Roar, and if he doesn't, he probably just hits face with everything. So it's 11 plus 8, it's 19. He dies to Savage Roar, yeah. Okay, then he trades. It's exact. Lethal. Well, you have one, it's actually one more because you can hear a power. I think 11, he, yeah, let's see. He will trade efficiently to Dazai Drake because it's very hard to deal one damage as a druid without uh, having access to low mana spells and still have an efficient turn afterwards. Yep. Okay, okay, chat. So if he goes face, he's dead. <laughs> Just so you know. Well, he's a caster. He should know. He knows. He's thinking about it. He's adding it right now. Frodan math. The fast way to add it is you just add the minions on the board and two times how many minions plus the face. So it's 11 and then another 8. So now it's 9 plus 6 plus the hero power. So 16 damage. Hmm. Don't you like the trade into the Drake more? Because no swipe is more powerful even for 9 mana. Uh, probably doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, I feel like swipe would have been so powerful last turn for um, Super JJ already, so Froden is not probably not worried about that swipe right now. So let's say he I kills, let's say he kills only the Lothab. We have uh, 11 on da damage on board for Frodan. Each Savage Order is another 8. So, 16 more. It's good. So, he needs to uh, trade two things. Be heal with lore. He's going to double trade, right? Let's think see. So. Okay. Yep. Okay, so the game goes on. It's getting interesting. The double savage drag is something tricky. Emperor will make it even more sketchy. Because whenever he draws force, he deals 22. But he only has one more force remaining in the deck because he chose to use it to, to clear the board. So, uh, he needs to armor up to not die to combo. Because the shade, this is going to do 5. Combo is 14, so four, uh, 19. Exactly. And he has to armor up this turn. And kill the lore also.
Hmm. Hmm. Swipe face emperor. I'll be open. Well, swipe face emperor, you, you die. Do you? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. you die to combo. Like unless, un you should check your shredder first and see if it's a taunt. Okay. Right? Oh, oh, the hurry, hurry, hurry. Oh my god, this is stressful. Just Emperor? I'm stressed. Just, I would just play Emperor Dinosaur's hero power. Oh, oh, he has... Run both oh, man. He has to, he's expecting combo here. Oh, maybe he's going to armor up. He's been expecting combo for a long time, so I think he's going to armor up. Yeah. Okay. But he could have checked the shredder for a uh, I don't know, it's hard to win with this yeah, play, right? Yeah, I like the Emperor more because it gives you an out for, like, Force of Nature, Savage Roar, Savage Roar. Yeah, you, you can actually win the game if you Emperor... And you hear a power. And you just double trade, right? And you only have to single trade if your shredder happened to give a taunt. I know it's really unlikely, but. Hmm. It's not little for Frodan, even with double savage or very close. Yeah. Will JJ just heal? And yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Frodan needs a taunt. If he gets a taunt, he's in a really good spot. Does he run into the four? Uh, I haven't seen it. Maybe it'll get it off the Shredder. Uh, okay, that's game unless the Shredder gives something good. Anoitron? Because now the shade's going to be one bigger than Anoitron, last time. Anoitron, Vitality Totem, the Robocub, and uh, the Frostwolf Grunt. Oh, uh, it feels bad. I'm going to give... Let's all give Frodan a cap of fried hug when he comes out. No, don't count Frodan out yet. We'll see what the Shredder <laughs> brings. <laughs> Come on, Shredder. You can do it. Esports. It's still really hard to win after he gets the taunt. Hmm. Forgotten has to embrace the esports. He's gonna. He knows. Oh, come on. Oh, I'm so stressed if I'm Frodo in here. It's the last game. It was Druid versus Druid to go on to the round of four. Oh. Uh, okay. No. Didn't that's, get it. And game. Super JJ is happy about that. And, and he, he is going to be the one advancing to, to the semifinals. Play this with Gara, right? Exactly. So the final, the semifinals are... Um... Wait, wait, wait. He's going to get wrecked by Gara's Shaman. Let's see if Freeze Mage against Double Doom Hammer. Yeah, look at Super JJ after his grueling series. Seven game series. Double Doom Hammer Kazan. It all came down to the Druid Mirror and JJ. And it could have gone either way, honestly. Yeah. And, but JJ takes the series and. Man, this guy, is, this, this guy is happy for sure. Has this been like the best tournament performance ever from Super JJ so far? Uh, yeah. Reno Jackson, man. It's powerful. Well, we haven't quite seen him in play just yet, but we might actually in the semifinals. Let's see what JJ has to say in the winner's interview. Congratulations, bro. Hey, guys, what's up? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, tell us, uh, how did you feel going into the series against Pro then? Um, I was not even like, I don't, didn't think like I'm like favorite or anything. Um, he played really solid and improved over the whole tournament. So I was like, okay, um, I'm going to play my best. Um, I think it was fine. How did you feel before the last game with, in the Druid Mirror that is like anything? How did you feel when you saw the Druid Mirror? Oh. A Druid Mirror can, can be kind of hard. It's like was one of the um, examples. Like, Druid Mirror can be really hard. If it's like struggling back and forth, and we had both kind of the same RAM cards. So it was actually really hard. But um, yeah, it was a good game. It was a really <laughs> good series. Yeah, we enjoyed it. Yeah, and um, how do you feel? How do you like your chances uh, going into the semifinals against Gaura? Uh, yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm happy. Um, yeah, I'm watching forward to this series. What do you think about this, uh, him bringing Shaman? Like, uh, do you, do, are you afraid of that? Are you going to ban that? Rekful said he would have banned it. Wait, oh, wait, wait, why are you giving tips? I, I have to <coughs> see. I will think about it. Maybe I will ban it. I like the Shaman deck. It's kind of cool, right? Yeah, I mean, I, very cool. I definitely want to see more of the Shaman in action. So please don't ban it, OK? OK, I will see. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys, for having me. Yeah, congratulations once again. And yeah, this is going to be, the, um, yeah, this is going to conclude our series of quarterfinals. Um, let's see once again who advanced. We, in our first quarterfinal, we had Zalei defeating Orange 4 to 3. Stan Sivka defeated Vortex um, 4 to 2. Then Rekful defeated, um, no, Gara defeated Rekful 4 0. What a crushing defeat. 
felt good. <laughs> and and now in a seven game, another seven game quarterfinal, we had Broden losing, losing Super JJ. to Super JJ. Hey, hey, but look, pretty you good know, series. in my groups, I won both my groups. Feels good. Yeah, that was pretty sick. Yeah. But unfortunately, your run ended in the quarterfinals. Too bad. Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to have some nice uh, semifinals coming up. The first one right here up next is going to be Zalai versus Stancivka. So after a short break, we'll bring you this semifinal. So don't go anywhere.